going on everybody welcome back to the channel i'm here at sacramento still checking out this beautiful beautiful historic cemetery uh, i am seeing some cool mausoleums off in the distance here so we're gonna go walk around and uh, check out a few of the mausoleums and private areas and let's do it Here is the uh, mausoleum of the Van Voorhees family, Alex Albert, Al oh, Al Albert Alexander Voorhees, Van Voorhees. He was a local businessman. He was in the harness business, which I would assume is probably like for horses. Um, he was, like I said, a local businessman. Um, he was active in political affairs around here too. Very well-to-do person, very well-to-do family, as you can tell by this beautiful mausoleum gorgeous we're gonna jump up in there and uh, take a look at it closer but just check this out man all right and there is albert alexander van Voorhees, top middle Top row, 1833 to 1906. And he's got various family members in here as well. Probably the, maybe the, if it's a family crest, probably not, but that's just the tile work on the floor. Very interesting. Very beautiful um, area in here. There's a top left, Harriet Wadsworth Van Voorhees, 1839 to 1871. Georgina Monfort Patterson uh, is another name, but I don't think. Oh, there she is on the other side, his other wife. George, this is Georgie, but she's Georgina M. Monfort Patterson, 1846 to 1928. Very interesting. Children, Kate Louise Van Voorhees. Let's see, maybe not in here. I don't see a Kate. A Harriet Wadsworth Van Voorhees Finney. Let's see, where, 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 where? I'm looking, looking, looking. And there's a Ralph Henry Van Voorhees, and he's in the middle there, bought on the middle row in the middle. Very, very beautiful. And like I said, he was a well-to-do family. You know, the, the, father, the father was a businessman, owned a business or bought an interest in the business, and there you have it. It's like Watt family, W A T T. Much like the last one, there's a, uh, you know, rows and everything. All right, there on the second row, uh, the first one was second row, Charles Watt, 1827 to 1899, a local businessman. And it says on Find a Grave that he died of the age of 72 of fatty 
degeneration of the heart. I guess that would be maybe heart disease back in those days. I don't know. And his wife, Hattie, is right next to him in the middle here. 1841 to 1902. Yeah, beautiful tile work on the floor. You can barely see it anymore. the dirt, but I love the checkered tiles. Elliot family. This is a beautiful mausoleum. Beautifully decorated inside. back there with some flowers, little statues, uh, a crucifix. Very, very beautiful. And in the center here, there's this sculpture. There's a David Osborne Elliott in here, born June 25th, 1888, died August 17th, 1927. It said he died of an, of an accidental bullet wound, David did. Uh, husband of Hazel F. Elliot. Accidentally got shot or shot himself. But David is the top, the top left right there, David. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, huh? Accidental gunshot. Cemetery is big. Good size. Let's go walk around and look at some stones. There's some old stuff up here. Very interesting. There's paths and everything. There's paths that go all zigzagging down here. There's, there's graves down there that are overgrown in grass and plant life. Down there, down that hill. side looks really old. And there's that Elliot mausoleum I was just in a second ago. I'm on the back side of that. Ugh. Starts getting a little bit more unkempt around here. Huh. Very interesting. I mean, should I dare? I'm sure there's probably homeless individuals down here as well. Looks like there's garbage around here. Like people have been eating food and doing other things. But wow, there's a road down there. How do I get down to that one? I don't know. Climb through all this. Let's go back up. Interesting, they got gates up here, I guess so you don't fall off. Can you go through here? Oh no, it's not a door. It's just so people don't fall off, I guess. Look at all the graves down there. Just in the overgrowth. And there's like an old dirt road down there. It looks like a dirt road. Huh. Maybe we'll find our way down there. 
Talmuds statue there has missing a head. Looks like it's kind of washed out, kind of hard to read on this one. Not sure how well it's coming out, but probably not very well. Oh, the Mark Hopkins Monument. I do believe in San Francisco there is a hotel, a fancy hotel, called the Mark Hopkins, if I'm not mistaken. A very wealthy individual, obviously. Um, here's a sign associated with the uh, monument. Let's see here. It says, construction began in this splendid mausoleum in 1878 when the then very wealthy Mary Hopkins wished to provide a suitable resting place for her recently deceased husband, Mark Hopkins. The mausoleum was completed in 1880 at a cost around $80,000. In the 1850s, Mark Hopkins had operated first a grocery store and then a hardware store in Sacramento. He became a founding partner of the Central Pacific Railroad, a visionary undertaking to build the first crossing of the continent by rail. One of the legendary Big Four, he served as treasurer of the Central Pacific Railroad through its expansion until his death at 65 in 1878. Ah. A full year and a half were required to erect the mausoleum, with workmen constructing around the clock to finish it. A special rail line spur was laid to transport tons of granite from the rail depot to the cemetery and along the cemetery pathway to the building site. The original contractor was Griffith Company of Perrin, California. There were over 350 tons of Rocky Mountain red granite that came from a quarry near the highest point of the Union Pacific Railroad's crossing of the Rocky Mountains. The gray granite came from a quarry near Donner Lake, the highest point of the Central Pacific Railroad's construction in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was selected by Miss Hopkins because Mr. Hopkins had admired it on his first trip east on the Transcontinental Railroad. The walkway around the vault is comprised of three kinds of granite, red, gray, and Perrin black. The interior is said to be a polished white Italian marble. All together, there were probably well in excess of 900,000 pounds of stone in the structure and a concrete foundation eight feet deep. Wow. The tomb was built to accommodate 16 caskets, eight marble grottos on either end of the building. However, there are only four interments recorded and one of those is in question. Mark Hopkins and his brother Moses are on the west side and his brother Ezra and nephew Samuel on the east. Samuel was a merchant seaman who died at sea on the way home from the Orient. It was customary at the time for those who die at sea to be buried at sea. Samuel's name is carved onto the door on the southeast side of the vault. Samuel's name might be a cenotaph, which is a word derived from the Greek kenotophis meaning empty tomb or monument when a person is buried elsewhere. So, very interesting. Let's take a walk around to this massive monument. That was a mouthful, huh guys? I'm out here in the blazing sun, <laughs> reading all this, getting cross-eyed. So, we got Mark Hopkins in the front and Moses Hopkins. So, Mark Hopkins was a big deal. Let's walk around. This thing is just massive. It's probably one, it's probably takes a, one of those monuments that takes the most room in this cemetery, I would say. On the other side, there should be some people to cenotaph for somebody as well. Oh boy. That is Samuel Hopkins. Uh, I think Ezra is the one that is the uh, cenotaph that's in question here. I would, God, I would love to see the inside of this thing. As he said, the inside is pretty spectacular too it's supposedly so wow that's insane cast the shadow on this side that's for darn sure let's take a one last look at it it's 
funny when you get started getting close to the gates on the streets that surround the cemetery kind of see some shifty looking individuals out here so i'm gonna be careful not to get too close to the gate because i'm seeing some people over there that i might not want to deal with on the other side of that gate you know we got to keep everything all peaceful and happy can't be having no drive-by going on during the, my video right See, I wonder if across the road up here, that's another cemetery, or it's part of the same one. I'm sure Jason would know. Jason, is this part of the same cemetery, or what's going on over here across this road? I guess it's looking a little different on the other side, so I'm not positive. But I'm not seeing any signage for another cemetery either. Got the area of... Uh, John W. Rock here. Interesting. Individual looking individual here. Thirty-eight to 1907 John Rock W. Rock so yeah I just looked up the cemetery this is not the uh, historic city cemetery anymore this is the uh, Masonic Lawn Cemetery in Sacramento according to Find a Grave so a little bit about John Rock here he uh, a Union Cavalry officer during the Civil War he led a company and some of the men are buried nearby so he uh was in the civil war and led a company civil war veteran right here We've got other people in here too sammy smith 1873 to 1930 I got more about John Rock here. What am I finding? Um, a master of the Union Lodge, number 58. The Union Lodge was chartered in 1855. It was one of the first Freemasonry lodges in Sacramento. Rock was senior warden in 1864, master in 1865 to 1866, and again in 1868. Rock was also a member of the Scottish Rite Palestine of Perfection Lodge, as well as being a trustee on, of the Masonic Hall Association. So a little bit more about John Rock there, not just a Civil War veteran. It's getting late in the day here, guys. I'm going to roll out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. We found a little bit more interesting things, interesting people, interesting mausoleums, etc., etc. So if you enjoyed it for this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. Therefore, you can be notified of all of my future upload guys. It was a pleasure coming to you live from Sacramento, California. I'll be talking to you guys soon.